your chicken nuggets in there if you want. Okay, good. I will get some in a minute, but my the intro didn't record, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have to redo it. You know what really sucks? When your printer is in the middle of a seven-hour print and it clogs up. Yes, it gets jammed. Um, this has happened to me not once, not twice, but three times now. And every single one of the times I've been printing the same thing. It's a seven-hour print, and it's quite annoying. You know what also sucks? When you're recording an intro to a video and it doesn't record and you don't realize it until after you're editing the video. That's what I'm doing now. So in today's video, I'm not only going to show you how to take apart your hot end, um, I'm going to show you how to unclog it and how to replace all the parts for it if you need to do that, which is what I had to do. Um, then later I'm going to talk about how to avoid clogging um, the actual printer itself. As you can tell, football is being played. So anyway, let's go. All right, what's up everybody? My name is Dustin and today we're going to take a look at unclogging one of these Prusa i3s. So earlier last month I had a problem with some uh, filament getting jammed in the middle of prints. It tended to happen with longer prints. Um, if you see here you might recognize this. This is the uh, heart gear. Um, and it's a, about a seven hour print on this printer. Now the reason my printer was clogging is because the filament that I'm using, this specific red, is absolutely terrible. It's um, pretty much the really cheap eBay stuff. Um, and I very highly suggest that you do not use the cheap eBay stuff. Um, I will go into detail more about that later, um, but in the end, it ended up clogging my printer once before. I was able to take the hot end apart and fix everything, unclog everything, and it worked for a while until I used the filament again and it clogged. So, I'm going to show you how to fix this. First off, you're going to need a couple tools. If you have the same printer as me, which is the Folger Tech Prusa i3, um, and you put it together yourself, you probably already have the tools that you need. So there's two ways you can take apart this extruder. One way involves using a 2.5 millimeter Allen key and a 1.5 millimeter Allen key, and one only involves the 1.5. Um, I can show you both, but I'm just going to show you the uh, just the one Allen key method because it's a little bit easier. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to see on this, but I'll try to put up some pictures um, to be able to show you. If you want to use both these two hex bolts right here, you'll just undo this, these two, with the 2.5, and the whole assembly is basically going to come apart, and you're going to be left with the actual hot end down here and the uh, heat block that's right above it. Um, and then you'd use the 1.5 to take the hot end apart from there. Um, the way that I like to do it is if you look way down underneath here, there is a little tiny set screw that is the 1.5 millimeter. So the first step is make sure everything is unplugged and not on. That would be very bad. Second step, if you failed in the middle of a print, take all the crap off first. It also helps to remove everything so you're not constantly reminded of the failure in amount of wasted plastic. I'm not going to do that because I am a little bit too lazy. Anyway, I have my uh, extruder modified slightly. Um, if you remember from my original video, I had this cooling fan over here, um, right here, blowing on the actual print, and I told you guys you should do that. Um, because of the failed prints that I had, I moved it over here so it helps with this fan as a heat sink and blowing away all the hot air that's uh, inside of the track. You'll get to see that more when I take this apart. Um, and I haven't really had any print quality issues be since then, so I'm not really going to do anything with it yet. Um, so your printer is going to look a little bit different than this, but basically there's this fan over here which is an accessory that I put on there and then there's this fan right here um, which comes with the printer. So anyway if you have anything in the way I suggest uh, removing them first. So I'm going to try to take off this fan real quick because it'll make it a little bit easier to access everything so I'm going to pop off this tie and pop off this one down here and take it all off. And now I have my little fan right here and it's not connected. It makes it a little bit easier to access. Now, I'll put up a picture, hopefully, but if you look way down here, there's a small set screw, and it's the 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And basically, you can just undo that a little bit. Just a little, you don't have to take it all the way out. And the hot end is going to pop, pull, pretty much pop right out. A little bit. <laughs> Now, of course, this is the best way to take apart this printer. Your printer may vary. Um, so this is the main uh, hot end itself. Um, this has got the nozzle. 
and the uh, tube, it's got a name, I cannot remember what it's called, um, but it's basically the tube that runs from the extruder down into the hot end. Now if you look in this uh, right up here, you're going to see all this black goop right in here. That's not good. Um, essentially that is uh, burnt plastic that has seeped up through the threads in here and has gotten in here. That makes it extremely hard to get this out of this block. So if you see that on either this or on the uh, actual nozzle itself, be prepared, it's going to take a lot of force. So to start off, um, if you wrap this with the Kapton tape, I suggest taking that off. It makes it a little bit easier, um, just so you can access the screws. I should have used scissors for that, but um, I don't have any right now. Alrighty, so you're going to see right here, these big wires are going to the actual uh, hot element themselves, and the smaller one is going to be going to the thermistor. And that actually is what measures the temperature of the entire hot end. Um, this is the metal block. That's basically just a metal block. I believe it's aluminum. And then the uh, actual nozzle itself, um, which yours is going to look a little bit different. I actually destroyed mine taking it apart the last time because uh, I'm an idiot. And then this is the tube um, that goes from the extruder down into the hot end. This actually has some PTFE tubing inside of it and it's supposed to insulate it. Basically the reason that most printers clog, and at least why mine has been clogging, is because the cheap filament that I've been using heats up within this tube, expands, and gets clogged up, and it because it expands and catches on the walls, it can't flow through correctly, causes a clog, um, and then it just gets forced into each other, and then it causes a whole mess. So, once you get the hot end just like this, what you're going to want to do now is take the uh, actual hot element in the thermistor out. I believe both of them also use the 1.5 millimeter Allen key. The thermistor only uses just this one right here, and it pops right out. Take care to not uh, bang those up too much, they are fairly delicate. And the uh, actual hot element itself uses both of these on the side. So, one right here, and then the one right up here. Now just to let you guys know, I do not have an, a uh, monitor seeing what I'm actually recording. I'm using my phone and a uh, lens for it to make it a little bit more wide angle. So I have no idea what my camera is actually seeing. So if I'm recording absolutely horrendous video, I apologize for that. So now that both of the, uh, the elements are out, you should be left with this. This is the actual hot end itself. This is the entire... Uh, the entirety of the assembly for the most part. Um, you can go and just buy a new, brand new one of this uh, this assembly if you desire. Um, I'm a little bit lazy and I decided to save an extra dollar by buying all the other parts and causing me much more problems. Anyway, I am going to actually replace this tube because the uh, PTFE inside actually got burnt to the point to where it no longer works correctly and the nozzle because as you can tell, it doesn't look anything like it should. Look at your printer, give it a comparison, you'll understand. So now that this is out, you need your parts if you're going to be replacing anything. Um, if you're going to just be unclogging things, I will show you how to do that when I take this apart. Um, but if you're going to be replacing these parts, you need these right here. This is a brand new tube that I got full of PTFE tubing. Um, I got it off of eBay, it was a couple of dollars, I cannot remember. Um, and this is a brand new nozzle just like the one that's on here, this one is actually um, from Folger Tech, where I got this 3D printer. Bought it off of their eBay site. So I will put these aside for right now, but I will be replacing these, these parts with these parts. So now here's the fun part. If you know anything about threading things, you'll know that there is a Loctite and various things that you can put on the threads that basically locks it in place. This plastic seeping up into these threads basically works just like that, and it's quite annoying. So you're going to have to get some uh, big pairs of pliers to grab onto this and um, carefully remove this by basically breaking the plastic in there. Um, it is a good thing, depending on how you do it, to replace this afterwards, because you may damage the threads. Um, as you, if you look at this, it's hard to see. 
probably won't focus. Um, but there's a little bit of a gap on the one that comes with this printer. Um, the top part goes up into a block. It's not threaded, so it doesn't matter if you damage these threads. But the one down here, if it actually gets threaded into this block. So if you damage the bottom part, you may have a little bit of problems. Same with the uh, actual nozzle. It's threaded as well. So, let's see if I can get this out. So, I've uh, grabbed a pair of pliers. Linesman's pliers, I believe those are called. And a pair of channel locks, small cobalt ones. You should buy cobalt stuff at Lowe's. Uh, no jacket feels much better. So anyway, I'm going to open this up. And um, I don't know if there's any better way to do this. Um, I haven't found it, if it does exist. Um, but basically it involves putting this block into some uh, channel locks. Makes it pretty easy like that. And then grabbing these pliers and basically grabbing on um, to this up here and twisting. The nozzle itself usually has um, is basically in a hex shape, so you can use a um, small metric wrench. I don't know the exact size. When I put the new one on it, I will give you that information. Um, but mine is so... Uh, damaged from me taking it off previously that there's no way I could use a regular wrench on it. But you probably will be able to. Um, so let's see if we can get this off. This will be attempt number one. Okay, so pliers are useless. I'm going to be trying a, another pair of channel locks. Um, I believe that's what I used last time, and I think it actually will work, so give me a moment. Alrighty, so with two pairs of channel locks, I was able to remove it. Um, you'll notice that it was pretty difficult to do that because of the plastic that was seeping out, um, basically working as Loctite, and uh, when you're doing something like that, it stinks. My autofocus is going nuts. There we are. Um, so, if you look right here, let's see if you can see that. Probably not. Let's see if I can focus. Come on, focus on the little doohickey. Focus on my fingers. <gasps> it's beautiful. See that little plastic tab right at the top? That's part of the PTFE tubing, and it shouldn't be sticking out like that. It's quite sticking out quite a bit. I actually had to chop off about a quarter of an inch of that um, in order to um, put it back in, because as you can see, it's sort of kind of going all wonky. Um, it shouldn't be doing that. Um, I don't know if this is just a cheap piece or what, um, but that shouldn't be happening. Alrighty. There we go. So, I got that part of it out. That's really uh, all that really matters. Yes, uh, two pairs of channel locks is all I really needed. If yours isn't uh, basically plastic cemented in there, you probably won't need to use two of them, um, but I did. So anyway, that's one half of the problem out. Um, I will show you how to unclog this. This is usually the problem for me. Um, I will show you how to undo that as soon as I get the nozzle out. Another moment, please. Alright, so the nozzle is nowhere near as hard to actually take out as the uh, tube was, um, basically because it wasn't cemented in there. However, be cautious because the uh, nozzle itself is made out of some very uh, soft metal. I'm not quite sure what it is. I believe it's brass or something along those lines. And um, it makes it very easy to just completely destroy it um, if you're using the incorrect tools. Um, so I suggest using a wrench if you have one. I will check the um, actual size right now if you give me a moment. Alrighty, as far as I can tell, a 7mm wrench will work fine for uh, the nozzle that I have and the nozzle that it came with. Um, your printer may vary. Um, of course, this new nozzle that I'm using is going to be a, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I don't know if that's what came on it originally. I believe it is, but don't quote me on that. Um, so anyway, unclogging your original one if that's what you want to do. <clears throat> Usually, at least in my experience, this is what clogs up. This is the PTFE tube. Um, I don't know if there's a correct way to do it, but I'm going to see if this is what clogs up. So basically I take the uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen key and I just shove it up into the end and it should push out the rest of the PTFE tubing. Um, I, again, I don't know if this is the correct way to do it, but it works for me. And as you can tell, it's extremely hard to... Give me another moment. 
So you can see here that this is the PTFE tubing that is supposed to be in that tube. Um, it popped out and there's some filament still in here. Um, this filament uh, was actually so compacted into this, um, that's basically what causes the clog. And it's extremely annoying. <laughs> so, if that's what you're trying to do, you need to get that filament out. Use pliers, use whatever you need to do. And you should be able to pull it out. Let's see if you can see it. See that little bulge on the end of the uh, filament? That's what was causing the problem. That little bulge. It's mainly because the uh, PTFE tubing that was in that main tube part of it was uh, damaged previously and uh, it was just a matter of time before it failed completely, which is what happened. So, uh, yeah, if something like that happens with your printer, you need to replace that tube. Um, you can call up uh, your uh, 3D printer manufacturer and um, get the specifications. Um, I just went on eBay and found the right threading and the uh, right tube for it. And um, it was pretty easy. It was like $6. I'll see if I can put a link in the description um, for anything that I use in here if need be. Um, so basically, that's the problem. If that happens, replace this part. If your nozzle is clogged, I will see if I can link a video in the description to someone else who's doing that because I don't have any of the uh, utilities you need to really unclog a uh, the nozzle. Um, so I will just put up a video to someone else's channel that can take care of that for you. Alrighty, it says that I don't have very much time left in my recording memory, so let's see if we can do this quickly. Um, now that you just have the block, if you're replacing the parts, it's basically the removal is the reverse of the words, and you know what I mean. Um, just put everything back together. Um, if you have your new nozzle, make sure it goes on the same end uh, that the previous one did, which is this one right here for me. We're just going to screw that in. Maybe. There we go. Now it's threaded in correctly. Um, threaded in correctly, not threaded incorrectly. Um, I'm going to use my uh, little tiny baby wrench to tighten it down the rest of the way. You want this to be extremely tight, but don't break it. Um, again, 7 millimeter wrench. Um, I'm going to get it as flush as I possibly can, as tight as I possibly can. I'll even use one of these vice grips just to make sure it's nice and snug. Put the nozzle in first because you can adjust how deep the, uh, the tube goes, but the nozzle should be flush. Um, so put the nozzle in first. Alrighty, so now you have the uh, tube right here. Um, so if you look at the tube, you're going to see one end, you can see the PTFE plastic inside. The other end is beveled, um, and it you know, kind of has an odd shape. Um, that is the end that needs to go up into the extruder. So the end that you can see the plastic goes into the hot end. So it should be the same threading as uh, the other one, depending on which, depending on where you got it and everything like that. So you should be able to just thread this in and get it as tight and snug as possible. Don't worry about damaging the threads up towards the top because it's not threaded on that part, um, but the bottom needs to be threaded correctly. So be careful with that. I will see you in a second. Alrighty, I've deleted a couple things off of my memory card. Sorry, Trans Siberian Orchestra. Um, so basically, I put the nozzle back on, tighten it down extremely tight, and I put the tube in, um, being careful not to damage too much of it. Um, you want it to be in there as basically as snug as you can, because you don't want any gaps between the nozzle and the tube. Um, any gaps that are in there may lead to uh, the filament going awry and causing another clog. Um, so you want them to basically be as flush as you can. Um, so now, pretty much the the rest is just the reversal of what you did originally. Um, you want to try to put it back the same orientation, that way you don't have to do that much calibration um, again, which is always annoying. That's the only reason I don't like doing this. Um, so basically I'm going to put the thermistor in there first. The thermistor is just going to go into this smaller hole up at the front. Um, it's not very hard. It's not very easy um, to mess things up. Um, they're pretty much, you know, just two holes and you can't put the wrong thing in the wrong hole because the holes are much different size. Um, so use common sense when doing stuff like this. 
um, but I'm just going to put the thermistor in its hole, put it flush, tighten it down. Again, don't uh, you know? Don't go crazy on getting it tight. Just get it you know enough to where it doesn't move, and then put the uh, hot element all the way in. Take the Allen key and tighten it down. That's one, and there's another one for the hot element, and tighten it down. And that's essentially it. You've now fixed your uh, clogged 3D printer, whether you unclogged it or just put new uh, bits into it. That uh, is completely up to you. Um, but you've essentially fixed it now, and it should work just fine. I don't know. I'm going to be testing it. If this is a complete failure, well, so be it. Now, remember, you can just buy this assembly itself online. Usually, you can find them on eBay um, for... You know, not very much. Uh, this specific one's an all-metal hot end. Um, if you need to search that, um, I think these go for fifteen to twenty dollars for this entire assembly online. If you need that, um, otherwise the parts are fairly cheap, couple dollars each. So now the last thing you need to do is shove it up the hole when it came. Um, still make sure you have it in the same orientation that you originally had it. Um, Everything should fit up there nice and smooth. Alrighty, now that I've got it up in there, um, there's a couple different ways uh, you can put this into the actual uh, printer. I like to push it all the way up in there so it's flush with uh, where it comes out of this plastic in the uh, extruder. Um, so originally when I got it, it was flush with the metal block, which if you take all this apart you will see. Um, so it was just flush with this metal top, but I didn't really like that because it makes it kind of hard to push the filament through. Your filament has to be really straight to get it down into where it needs to go. Doing it this way, it basically, as soon as it exits the uh, extruder motor, it's in the tube, which is a little bit nice. And you get a slight amount more height if that's what you need. So now all you really have to do is you get it lined up, make sure everything's where you want it, and you tighten down that little set screw that we uh, undid in the very beginning. So now once you have that in there, you can wrap the uh, actual hot end with the capped on tape that you, uh, if you did in the beginning, you don't necessarily have to. Um, I know it just basically protects the wires and everything and whatever mumbo jumbo they make up um, to tell you to do it, but it's good to do. Um, I do it every time and I don't have any problems with it. But essentially, once you have everything back in, your 3D printer should be back up and running. Do a couple print tests um, and you should be good. Alrighty, so what causes the uh, printers to jam? Well, there's a number of different reasons. It depends on what's jamming. Um, your extruder motor could be going bad and causing a jam. Um, of course, I didn't look into that in this video, but um, that could be a problem. Um, the tube the PTFE tube that I showed you, that was the problem for me, um, not only this time, but in previous clogs that I've had. Um, and it's been directly caused by cheap filament. Um, so if your tube gets clogged, basically this cheap filament will expand so much to where it cannot no, it can no longer um, go down through the tube. Um, because the tolerances are already pretty you know, tight, if you have some cheap filament which expands um, quite a bit, then you can have problems. Um, so, the last thing that could happen is the nozzle could be clogged up with dirt and debris and things like that that have gone through it. Um, usually that happens over time. Um, I haven't had it happen yet. Uh, of course, I just changed the nozzle so it's not going to matter right now, but if you've had your printer for a while, um, that might be the cause. So anyway, cheap filament. That is pretty much what I've seen as the number one cause to uh, print clogs. Um, and I mentioned eBay filament, cheap eBay filament. Just because it's cheap on eBay doesn't mean that it's bad, but it also doesn't mean that it's good. Um, something like this. This filament right here, this is um, some white PLA 1.75 millimeter filament that I've been using since I got this printer. I got this um, actual roll and a couple others the same day that I got my printer. Um, and I've been using this and never have I had a problem with it. Um, this was cheap eBay filament. Um, this I got it from a um, seller uh, in California, maybe? I don't remember. It was $20 or so for the full 2 kilogram spool, which is nice, and I haven't even gone through half of it yet. Um, and I've never had a problem with this. This filament is extremely nice, and it's cheap. Um, what I do notice is that when you look at it in the light, it has almost like a glossy finish to it. Um, a very 
um, nice smooth finish as well. Um, if you actually run your hand on it, um, it's very, very smooth. Um, most of the um, ones that I have are 0.75 or 1.75 millimeter. They're a little bit smaller than that, um, but that doesn't really bother me that much. I just adjust it within my um, slicer and then everything's fine. But this material is very good quality. I've never had a problem with it. Now, this on the other hand is the red that every time I've had a clog, it's been with this stuff. Um, this was also bought on eBay. It's very cheap. Um, this was, I think, 19 versus the 20 that that was. And um, it's not that good. Um, if you look at it in light, it also is shiny, but it's not a glossy shiny. Um, it's like a very dull shine. And if you feel it, it's got a little bit of a texture to it. It's not smooth like the uh, other material is. Um, so that's a good way to notice uh, you know, if it's crap or not. Also what I've noticed is that um, if you have this opening or if you have this style spool to where you can actually see the material as it goes through, um, that's usually crap. Um, you'll notice that on eBay if you can see pictures and you can see the uh, actual spool through like this, um, it's probably cheap material. Um, whereas this stuff doesn't have any of the holes and this stuff is really good. Um, there's a guy that I'm subscribed to on YouTube. Um, his channel is 3D Printed Life. Um, he actually has a small tutorial on buying filament and getting good quality filament. Um, I will put a link in the description of that. He doesn't know who I exist, I don't believe. So um, you don't need to tell him that I sent you because he doesn't know who I am. So main part of the story, don't use cheap filament. It's crap. Um, the better quality you get, the better quality prints you're going to have, the less problems you're going to have. Um, I highly recommend cheap filament on eBay if you get it correctly. I will put a link in the description to this specific one that I got this from. Um, any material that I've got um, other than this one has come from this same seller and it's always been good. I've never had a problem with it. Of course you can always get it on Amazon as well. Um, I just ordered some Hatchbox um, filament from Amazon. It was just about the same price as this stuff. Um, and I got a bunch of really good reviews on it, so I want to see if that's any good. Um, I actually ordered red because I don't want to use this on my new stuff. I don't want it to damage it or anything. This is absolute crap. I just I want to throw it away, but it's such a waste of good plastic. It was, you know, $20 or so for this. Um, I will find a use. Maybe I'll use it for uh, something else. I don't know. I'll tell you what I do. Um, anyway, good filament. Um, also, depending on where you got your printer, if you bought it as a kit or um, if you bought it yourself, the actual parts itself might not be that good, the hot end might not um, be that good, um, the tube you know, might be a little bit crappy. If your hot end is starting to go bad, the actual element itself is going bad and your temperatures um, aren't working correctly, um, that could cause a problem. Um, that's all stuff you're going to have to troubleshoot when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, I can't really help you that much in that, but maybe down the road. Anyway, hopefully this video has helped you to some degree. Um, you know, I've, I've been having problems with that, and if you guys have been having it with your Fulcher Tech i3, uh, Prusa i3, or any Prusa, or any 3D printer really, uh, maybe this video helped you. Hopefully it did. Anyway, I uh, hope to be putting out some lot more videos, 3D printing videos, and everything like the sort. Um, so... Feel free to subscribe if you like this video if you're not already. Feel free to comment in the video, um, like this video. Follow me on Twitter if you have any questions because you can message me on there and I will be able to respond very quickly. YouTube comments and YouTube messages are very, very slow. Um, so if you need to message me and you have Twitter, do it on there. It'll be a lot quicker and I will be able to respond very, very easily. So anyway, um, I think that's it for today. Um, hopefully I'll have another video out maybe this week. I'm not entirely sure. Um, anyway, until next time, I'll see you all later.